Women exposed to endocrine disruptors during pregnancy may have grandchildren with neurodevelopmental deficits. This is Healthcare Triage News. The prevalence of many neurodevelopmental disorders is increasing. One of these is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. While some may try to minimize it, kids with ADHD have been shown to have issues with quality of life and educational attainment. They can also have problems in adulthood, including premature death. We still don't know what causes ADHD. One theory involves endocrine disrupting chemicals, which have been linked to a number of neurodevelopmental disorders, including ADHD. EDCs, as they are otherwise known, can involve an epigenetic reprogramming of the germline. This means they can cause DNA changes that are passed on to future generations. In mice, studies have shown that EDC exposure can change behavior and stress responses in third generation offspring, and social interaction changes have been seen in fifth generation offspring. Few multi-generational cohorts exist to allow us to explore similar hypotheses in humans, but some do exist like this week's newly released article in JAMA Pediatrics entitled Association of Exposure to Diethylstilbestrol During Pregnancy with Multigenerational Neurodevelopmental Deficits. To the research! Researchers used data from the Nurses Health Study to look at potential third-generation outcomes of ADHD from diethylstilbestrol exposure. Diethylstilbestrol, which is a potent potential EDC, was given to many pregnant women between 1938 and 1971 to prevent complications of pregnancy. Somewhere between 5 and 10 million pregnant women received it. It was banned in 1971, though, because it had serious harms associated with it and few, if any, benefits. More than 2,000 participants in this study responded to questions about their mother's exposure to diethylstilbestrol during pregnancy. Most of them were certain, or somewhat certain, about this potential exposure and were included in the study. In 2001, the researchers asked many of the participants' mothers themselves this question and observed very good agreement with their prior reports. The gist of this analysis was to check if, basically, grandmother's exposure to diethylstilbestrol, an EDC, was related to grandchildren or third-generation ADHD after controlling for other factors. Let's get to the results. Data were available for more than 47,500 grandmothers, 1.8% of whom were exposed to diethylstilbestrol. They had more than 106,000 grandchildren, 5.3% of whom were diagnosed with ADHD. The use of diethylstilbestrol was associated with an increased odds of a grandchild being diagnosed with ADHD, with an odds ratio of 1.36. This association held after controlling for those grandmothers' age of delivery and after controlling for a history of depression. Further, investigation showed that this association was pretty much limited to diethylstilbestrol use in the first trimester, when the odds ratio was 1.63. Before we go any further, let's talk about the limitations of this study, because this is pretty inflammatory stuff. The main outcome of interest, ADHD, did depend on maternal reports, but there's no reason to think that maternal report will be linked to grandma's diethylstilbestrol use, so it's hard to think this would bias things. There could also be misclassification of diethylstilbestrol use, as it was asking for something that happened some time ago. Again, though, these data were collected long before the data on ADHD, so it's hard to argue for bias. More concerning is that there could be some unmeasured confounder that could be related both to diethylstilbestrol use and later diagnosis of ADHD, but I don't know what that would be. That's the problem with unmeasured confounders, though. We don't necessarily know what they are. The biggest limitation, though, is that we can't measure the means by which this mechanism works. The hypothesis is that the diethylstilbestrol altered the grandmother's germlines, leading to genetic changes inherited by the grandchildren, and these genetic changes somehow led to an increased risk of ADHD. We don't know that that's true. We don't know what genes to measure, and that wasn't part of this study. Even taking all that into account, this study found that there was an increased risk in the third generation having ADHD when the first generation was exposed to diethylstilbestrol during pregnancy. While the drug isn't used anymore, other EDCs do exist. And before you panic, the EDCs we might be exposed to in the environment are at a much, much lower dose than what pregnant women were exposed to with diethylstilbestrol. That's not the point of this study. What is novel and groundbreaking is that these results are exactly what you'd expect if an epigenetic cause of ADHD existed. It may be time to put some serious effort and money into looking at other epigenetic causes of neurodevelopmental disorders.
Do you like the show? Really helps if you subscribe or like us right down there. And while we've got you, another good way to support the show is a subscription service called Patreon.com, which allows you, the viewer, to donate even as little as a dollar a month to help make this bigger and better. It's always going to be free, but any support you might be able to give us, we really appreciate it. Go to Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage. We'd really like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Carlos Yergos, Crafty Geek, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam. Also, while we've still got you, you can check out merch at HGT Merch. Com. There's lots of great stuff there. You can go to our Facebook page or our Reddit, listen to the podcast. And of course, my book, The Bad Food Bible, still on sale everywhere. Appreciate it if you bought a copy.